Now we're going to talk about bending our own hoops. We've already talked a little bit about the material to use. In this video, we're going to focus primarily on the 10 foot long inch and 3 8 top rail that you would get at a hardware store. This is the most important thing that we can tell you. When you're bending your hoops, bend one complete hoop before you move on to the rest of the hoops. Whether you're bending a 10 or 12 foot hoop with two pieces or a 20 foot hoop with three pieces, measure that first hoop to make sure you have the right distance before you move on to the rest of the hoop bending. This is a new skill set that you're learning. This is a new tool that you're using. Give yourself plenty of time to practice on your first hoop. Make sure you give yourself time to tweak the first hoop. Make sure you're not bending it too far or not enough, but just do it on the first hoop. In this application, we've chosen to attach the bender first to a board and then the board to a, a much stronger application. Just keep an eye out for something that you can attach multiple points to so that as you're bending, it's, it's strong and robust. You would take this same application, this board and this mounter, and you could place it on a picnic table and you could do it sideways. Just keep in mind if you do it that way to not twist the pipe as you're pulling it through the bender. The hoop benders are meant to bend a specific radius. The 12 foot and the 20 foot hoop benders look very similar, but when you line them up, you can see that their arc or the radius that they create are very different. The 12 foot hoop bender is meant to be used with two pieces of 10 foot top rail. The 20 foot hoop bender is meant to be used with three pieces of 10 foot top rail. This combination of arc and number of top rail is what creates that very specific bend or the very specific hoop. We get a lot of questions about using a 12 foot pipe bender for a different size hoop. Maybe a, a 12, they want to use it for 14, um, that's not really what it's for. It's a 12 foot hoop bender. It bends a specific hoop size, which is 12. When pre-marking your top rail post, start from the schwagged in, measure up nine inches, mark it with a black permanent marker, and then go 18 inches. When you're bending your top rail, you're gonna take your first nine inch mark and you're gonna place it just at the band Make sure that the pipe is running on the ridges of the bender. Reach up high and start pulling it down. This is a good reason you want to hang the bender up high so that you have plenty of leverage to pull it down. Come back, look for your next 18 inch mark. Slide it down to your 18 inch mark. Make sure not to twist it. Keep it in the ridge. Reach up and bend it, pull it down. Slide it down again. Notice the hoop, the arc is beginning to form on the top rail. Line up the mark, pull it down. When you get to a point where you can't pull this down, you're going to take your leverage bar and you're going to insert the leverage bar into the end of the pipe. And as you slide it through to your next mark, this is going to give you the leverage to pull down the pipe. When you're bending the top rail, it's common to overbend it. You don't necessarily need to, to lay flat on this when you bend it. It's okay if it's just roughly an inch off of that, right about there. That way you're not overbending the arc. The tapered end of the top rail always goes into the bender first. The cheater bar won't fit on the swagged end. It only fits with the tapered end at the end of the bend on the opposite end of the top rail. As you get to the end, go ahead and grab your leverage bar, insert it to the end of the pole, slide it through to the next mark. Use your leverage pole to bend down the last bend. The next step is to attach the swag end of the top rail to the non swagged end top rail, slide them together, and attach it with a self-tapping screw on the side. Make sure you don't put that self-tapping screw on the top. As you're putting your hoops into the ground post, one person's gonna place the hoop into the ground post on one side, and on the other side, another person's gonna hold that hoop just outside of the ground post. It's probably gonna be 12 to 24 inches outside of the ground post. You're gonna squeeze that hoop into the ground post. 
This is what gives you the spring action of the hoop, which makes it more rigid. And then slide the hoops into the ground post together. Don't push them all the way in. Leave yourself some room to straighten them later. At this point, somebody's gonna get on a ladder at the very end of the hoop, and they're gonna look down the ridge line. This is how you're gonna be able to tell if the different hoops are lined up. Two people, one person's gonna get on one side, one person's gonna get on the other side, and they're gonna adjust those hoops from the direction of the person that's on the ladder looking down the line of the hoop house. You're gonna adjust those hoops up and down or left and right to make sure that they're all even. In another video, we're gonna talk about how to secure those hoops together with the hip board and the ridge line. This is a good example of how different the radius or the arc is on a 10 foot versus a 20 foot. This is an example of our US made steel and our 20 foot all metal kit. You can see how smooth and how even the arch is. This is a machined piece of metal. This is an example of a galvanized top rail that's been hand bent. If you're doing things by hand, you're gonna have a little bit of imperfection, that's okay. Our six foot hoop bender is a little bit different. It's meant to be used with three quarter inch EMT. Half inch EMT on one side and three quarter inch EMT on the other side. You're gonna bend it exactly the same with the three quarter inch EMT. You're gonna bend it to the top of the collar as you're bending it down. Or on this side, you're gonna bend it down to the top of the collar. There's no need to remove these collars. In our next video, we're gonna cover hip boards, baseboards, and ridge poles.